Hello everybody. Uh, welcome back to Discussion Dynamics. Today we will continue momentum of particles uh, and we will focus on oblique impact and constraint impact. And then we'll just do two examples. Okay, so without further ado, uh, let's uh, dive straight into our discussion. So I'm just gonna do a brief lecture review uh, here. Um, and I just would like to talk about uh, oblique impact. Yeah, so last time we talked about direct impact. Last time, direct impact. Today, oblique impact. Okay, so let's imagine such situation that we have two particles uh, pre impact and exactly the same situation post impact. Uh, all right, uh, and last time every single velocity was aligned with this line. Yeah, however, today we will introduce some more uh, general uh, case. Yeah, so let's assume that this guy, this guy has velocity uh, VA pre, and this guy has velocity, let's say, VB pre. Okay, and this direction will be called, I think, tangential, and this one will be normal. Okay, so what I'm gonna do, I'm just going to uh, create these two projections, here and here. So this day will be VA pre uh, normal, and this, this guy will be VA pre tangential. Okay, same situation, same situation here. We are, we are just going to have VB pre normal and tangential. So I can actually copy paste this one and just change the subscript, right? So this one will be tangential. Hmm. Okay, so now the situation is what, we what, what do we have post impact? So we have something for free, yes? Do you like free stuff? I don't like free stuff. Uh, yeah, so I think that we will have these two components for free, this component for free, and this component for free. They will not change. They, are, they, they will be exactly the same. So uh, this will be VA post uh, tangential, and this one will be VB post tangential. Okay, and this guy is equal to its counterpart uh, pre-impact. So this guy is equal to, to this guy. So I could even do blue. Let's maybe, I like to use colors. So blue is equal to blue. And let's say, I don't know, orange. Orange would be equal to orange. Okay, so we have these two guys for free. And this is not orange. This is red. This is orange. Okay, so I can write that this guy 
is equal to to this value. Any questions so far? Okay, and maybe one of you can tell me how to find what happens along this direction. How to find these two components? Repeat our methodology from last time. Okay? To, in order to find, let's say, this guy and this guy, just repeat what we did last time. Okay, questions? Okay, so uh, if there are no questions, let's do example number, uh, number one. Uh, please read and understand problem statement. Okay, so interesting problem. Uh, we will, uh, we, we can pretend to be a detective for, for a second, yeah. Uh, so we have situation pre-impact and post-impact, yeah. So let's maybe, let's maybe draw st something. So uh, we have pre-impact, such situation that we have this car going this, this way. So we will have M, B, behind you, yeah, M, B, 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 and this guy going, is going this way. M, A, V, A, and afterwards, so post-impact, We'll have them stuck together here and here. And they will have such velocity. Oops. And they will have this velocity. V final, let's say. And by the way, this angle is 30 degrees, if I remember correctly. And this angle is 10 degrees. Okay, so we have two drivers pre-impact, and one of and, and the limit the limit of speed is 30 miles per hour, and one driver is accusing the other one. Yes, that you are going much faster. Mm. So we will see based on the geometry, but based on the 30 degrees and based on 10 degrees and based on the masses of two bodies, we will see who is lying. Okay. So, um, yeah, any questions to the problem statement? I think it's clear, yeah. So this is interesting problem because in here we actually cannot specify line of impact and, and plane of impact. Uh, but we, we will uh, solve that problem anyway, uh, and we will use conservation of momentum because you guys should remember that momentum is preserved when impact is unconstrained. So we can, we can we will, we will use this, observation that momentum momentum is preserved uh, during during impact but unconstrained impact okay the other problem will be constraint impact i will show you how to deal with uh, these cases as well so let's draw our momentum equations along x direction and along y direction. So what do we have along the x direction? 
pre impact. Okay, we just have MA VA cosine 30 degrees, and this is equal to MA plus MB V final cosine 10 degrees. And what do we have in the y direction? Aha, we have MA VA sine 30 degrees minus MBVB. And this is equal to MA plus, I can copy it here, yeah, I can just copy this one and just replace cosine with a sine. I can copy it and replace cosine with a sine. Great. And you already know that I li like when things are aligned. Yeah. Okay. So how many equations do we have? And how many unknowns? This is not known. This is not known. And this is not known. So you have three unknowns. However, that pro problem can be solved. We don't need any more equations. Do you know why? Because they ask us to find v vb divided by va. vb divided by va. So they don't ask us to find each three, three, three values, yes? They just ask us to find the ratio. And it is possible without the third equation. Okay, uh, so this is how, I, so, so let's dive straight into solving that, that system of equations. So this is how I did it yesterday. I just divided, uh, I just divided equation y by equation x, okay? So I just did, I just took this equation, Second equation, I put it here, and I divided left hand side uh, by the left hand side and right hand side by the right hand side. That's what I did. I think this is the fastest way to do it. So this day will be divided by something, this day will be divided by something, and this day will be divided by the right-hand side. So I'm just going to copy right-hand side of this equation. I'm going to copy it here. And I'm going to take the left-hand side I'm going to copy it here, here, and, and here. Okay, let, let's see what will happen, because I think that many things cancel out. So I think that this thing cancels out, this thing cancels out, these parentheses, and the final. Okay, and we end up with such expression. 10, 30 degrees minus MB divided by MA, VB divided by VA, 1 over cosine 30, and this is equal to 10 of 10 degrees. Okay, so we ended up with such expression, and as you can see, guys, this is our unknown. This is our only unknown. Okay, so let's find it. Let's plug in values and let's find that VB divided by VA is approximately 0 0.4465. Okay, so who is a liar? Which driver was going faster? VA was going faster, exactly. 
VA is larger than VB. So VA, sorry, so driver A is a liar. <laughs> yeah. So, I don't know, it's not that funny. <laughs> okay, but it will stay like that. Anyway, <laughs> so we solved part A, yes, and now in part B, they ask us to figure out uh, how uh, how fast VA was actually going. So, part two. So, VA is equal to, or approximately, VB divided by 0 0.4465, yes, based on this based on this equation. And they told us to to assume that VB was telling the truth and that it was going 30 miles per hour. So in this case, if we assume that this is true, then VA was going approximately 67.186 miles per hour. So that was allegedly the true velocity of VA. Questions? Lars, are you here? Kevin, I think I see you. Kevin, no. Uh, and Trevor is not here. Okay. Uh, okay, any questions? So, example number two. Uh, yes, uh, Vincent. Oh, it's just, uh, so it's not using correct some more time consuming version, but let's say with these two cases, either B, in one B is telling the truth, and a second one A is telling the truth, and then we just find the other velocity um, from, from each equation. Ah, uh, I mean, you mean in general? I don't know what's in general. This is what they ask us for. No, no, no like to, to like, because we know for, for a fact that one of them was going to the, the speed limit. Mm. So if we make two cases, whether B or A was going to speed limit, then use these equations to find the second one, so the, the, the V final and then also the, the corresponding velocity. Mm, this is what we did. Is this what we did exactly? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that's that's better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, first yeah. We just used physical laws. Yes, we we just used conservation of momentum to figure out what actually happened. Okay? So I don't understand the question. I'm sorry. I don't understand the question. Yeah. Anyway, example number 2. As usually, please read and understand the problem statement. Okay, so even though this problem statement is very short, the solution will take us probably half an hour. Okay, so we'll just be solving that problem for next 30 minutes. Okay? Which is nothing wrong, it's nothing bad. I actually like that problem. It's probably one of the most physical problems we were talking about this semester. You will see why. Maybe you will agree with me, maybe you won't. We will see. Um, so what do we have in here? Aha, we have two particles, yes? We have two particles, and one of them is constrained with this rod, yep? And the other one is just dropped, dropped down, uh, on the other particle. They both have mass m. We know that the, the upper particle has velocity v0 pointing downwards, plus we know that uh, impact is perfectly elastic. We know everything that, that is happening before the impact. They ask us to find what's happening after the impact. Okay. Before we start uh, solution, let's do hidden part num uh, number zero, because I would like to figure out this angle, guys. So let's imagine that this is our particle before 
the impact. This is the other guy right before the impact. I would like to connect their centers. And I, will, I would like to create this black triangle, okay? So this is 2R, yeah, because all of them, two of them have the same radius. And this is R, okay? And I just would like to ask you guys to find this angle for me. This angle, let's say theta. Okay, so based on that black triangle, we can see that sine theta is r divided by 2r, which is half. So theta must be 30 degrees. Okay, theta is known. Okay. <clears throat> so now we can start the, our, our real solution. So... I solved that problem yesterday, by the way. Yep. And it need I need like th three attempts to actually figure out how to solve it. Okay. So this is uh, a just of my solution. This is like summary of my yesterday's solution. Okay. So this is constraint. By the way, this is constraint impact. We clearly have a constraint in here. Yes. And this is how how I looked at that problem. First of all, I would like to see what happens for the entire system, okay? So let, let's draw let's draw momentum diagram for the entire system. So it will be momentum momentum diagram for the entire system. So I would like to draw this particle and the other one right before the impact and due to thanks to technology i can copy them twice yes copy and paste here here and here so i think we know what happens before the impact Before the impact, this guy has this velocity or this momentum. And the other guy is at rest. They told us it's, it's at rest, okay? Um, what forces act on our system? So let's, let's write it, okay? So that will be mg, this direction, mg, this direction, However, as a digression, or actually this is important, during the impacts, gravity is negligible. We can, we can ignore it. It's negligible. Negligible. But there is one force acting on our system, that, that freaking constraint, yes, that changes everything. This. Okay, so just by looking at that free body diagram, actually this is not a free body diagram. It's a, I don't, I don't, because free body diagram is for each body separately, yes? And here we look at the entire system. So I don't know, let's call it free system diagram, maybe free system diagram. Okay, so anyway, you guys see that every single force acts along this direction, vertical. No force is acting along this direction. What can you tell about the momentum about this uh, along this direction? It is conserved. It is preserved exactly. Okay. Uh, great. But before writing it down, let's see uh, what happens after the impact. So maybe one of you could tell me what is the velocity of this body after the impact of this body, the the bottom body, the lower body. Which direction? Yeah. And why, Brian? Yeah. Perfect, yeah. Uh, and the trajectory will be a circle, yes? Yeah. Th that rod uh, will just enforce that the trajectory, trajectory will be a circle. Yeah? And that velocity will be indeed, uh, indeed horizontal. Great, thanks. So, and it will for sure point this way. 
to the for sure point this way. So I would write that this is M B V B post. How about velocity of this particle? Can we do we know exactly which direction it will have? No, exactly. Uh, we th that direction can be arbitrary. Yes. Uh, I mean, we don't we cannot predict it right now. We will just figure it out uh, at the end of the problem. So. Yesterday, I actually thought which coordinate system is best to express this this velocity, okay? And I figured after like trial and error that I would like to introduce this coordinate system. This and that. So that would be normal and that would be tangential. Okay, so let's say that tangential velocity will be pointing this way. So that this will be M. Oh, I can get rid of this sub subscript B, yes? Not MB, but M, because they are the same. So M, V, B, V, sorry, M, V, A, post, tangential. And which direction you guys want to assume? Do you want to assume this direction? Or shall I flip the vector? Which one do you want? It doesn't matter. This one, can, can, can that stay? Let it stay, okay? VA post. Uh, normal. Okay, so let's assume that this is our situation uh, <coughs> after the impact. All right, and now uh, this is what you guys said. No, f ah, let's, let's not forget about our integral. So it will be plus integral from 0 to TF some t final, dt, and this is equal to that. Okay, and now, no forces act in the x direction. No forces in the x direction. That, that implies momentum preserved. Momentum preserved in the x direction. Okay, so let's write our equation. So what do we have? Aha, uh -huh. zero, so x, this is positive, zero plus zero is equal to minus m v b post. Oh no, we must do some projections here, yes? Okay. So let's say that this blue component uh, so if 30 degrees is here so if 30 is in here that means that 30 will be in here okay so that means that this blue guy will be M V A post T um, cosine cosine theta cosine theta thirty degrees, and also and maybe that green guy here. Yeah, I, I will not put it on the drawing. He will, he, I will just keep the color coloring here. So that will be plus M V A post T cosine theta, and that r green guy will be M V A post N sine theta. Okay. So what do we have in here? We have one equation and how many unknowns? First of all, M cancels out as well, yes? I can cancel out M every, from everywhere.
So I can put it here, but this time without n. So we have one equation and how many unknowns? I did that this is unknown. This is unknown. And this is unknown. Not good. We have one equation and three unknowns. Yes. So we need we need to find two more equations, right? Unfortunately. Okay. <clears throat> so let's keep it here and maybe you guys have an idea. Uh, it's a physical problem, so I just really care today about physics. I don't care about mathematics, okay? So, wh wh what is your, your idea, guys, ba looking at that, that picture, for example? Do you think it's a good idea to write equation along this direction? Shall we go for this direction right now? Yeah, just to be on the same, same page, yeah? We just wrote the equation for this direction, for the horizontal one. Do you think we should actually go for this one as well? If yes, why? If not, why? <laughs> I think it's, it's a bad idea, actually. Yeah, do you want to go for it again? Yeah. Exactly, yes. So... Uh, Ian is right, yes, because if we go for this direction, <coughs> check this out, we, we have to introduce t in here. The question is, what is t? I don't want to calculate it, yeah? It's not the only unknown, by the way. What is tf? Do you know what is time that this happens? No. So in here we would introduce one more equation, but two more unknowns. So that this is not a good idea. Uh, however, Yesterday, I, I just realized that something interesting will happen when we just focus on the upper body. So now let's do momentum diagram, not for, for the entire system, but only for the upper body, okay? And let's see what, what will happen. So now, momentum diagram. For the upper, upper sphere or ball, I don't know. Upper ball. Okay, so this time I will just draw this sphere three times. Actually, I will not draw it. I will just uh, copy it and paste it. Okay, so before we know what happens, we have MD0. And after, I think we guys assumed that we have we have these two components, yeah? We have uh, MV A post tangential, and also we assume this direction. This would be MV A post normal. And this will be normal, this will be tangential. Okay. So again, in here we have mg, but let's neglect it, okay? mg really does not have that much impact. During, yeah, mg has not much impact on impacts. Yeah, I don't know. Negligible. But there is one more force acting on that particle, which is exactly the, the reaction force from the other guy. This n. So this is normal, this is tangential. Okay, question to you. Is there any direction with no forces? <laughs> this one. Tangential, yes? Along the tangential, along the tangential direction, we have no forces. That implies that momentum is preserved along the tangential direction. Okay. 
Okay. Oh no, so I must do some projections here, yes? Because I would like to write this equation for t with, let's say, this direction as positive. I don't know. So and I must know this direction, yeah? I mean, this component. So this there will be mv0 uh, sine theta. Yeah. So we will have mv0 sine theta is equal to mva post tangential. Great. M cancels out. This is one half, by the way. And we can triumphantly write that this velocity is equal to one half v0. We found our second equation. Not only that, we actually solved for one one unknown. Yes. Okay. How do you like it so far, guys? Is it interesting problem? Yeah. Maybe it's a bad choice for today. Yes. Today you should we should probably do something easy. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, it's not the end. <laughs> we must do thirty three percent more. But before doing them, any questions? Okay, so we need third equation. Mm, I don't do I want to ask you that question? Yeah. What would you do right now? Yeah. How to find third question? Exactly. Yeah. We didn't use the everything they told us. Yeah. Let's do it. Coefficient of restitution. Coef of restitution. Okay, so we just have to go for this expression, yes? E is equal to delta V post divided by delta V pre. Yep, along the, along the normal direction, yes? So right now, I just want to draw these two spheres. And I'm going to draw them twice. So I'll copy it once and paste it here. So what did we have before the before the impact? Aha, we have this, this velocity component, yes? V0. But we care only what happens along this, this direction. Do you remember that brief lecture review from today? Yeah, so we only care about this component of velocity. The red one. So this guy, uh, this guy will be v cosine 30 degrees. Okay, and the other velocity is zero. And now situation post impact. I believe that we have such situation that this guy has VB post and the other guy has two components, yes, but we will care only about this one. VA post normal. And then let me project this one. So in here, here we just care about this green component. So that would be VB post sine 30 degrees. Okay. We are ready to write down our, our equation. So E is equal to delta V post divided by delta V pre. And in this case, it will be equal to, oh, 
So let's assume that all the velocities should point in this, this direction, okay? So I believe that in here we will have V cosine 30 degrees minus zero. And in this case, we will have VB post, sorry, zero here, plus VA post N. Yeah, I know that this should be plus, this should be plus, based on that little trick I showed you at the beginning of last, uh, last discussion. Yeah. Yeah, this should be plus uh, because these these components point opposite directions. This one and this one. Yes, and of course I didn't make a mistake. I was just uh, checking your. No, no, I'm kidding. I made a mistake. Thank you. My my bad. <laughs> Yeah, there was more, one more question, I think. No, okay. All right, so this is one, by the way. So we, we found our second equation, okay. So this will be um, V0 square root of three divided by two is equal to one half VB post plus V A post N. Okay, so let's take this equation. Let's take this equation. And let's steal this equation. And I think that we, we found one, one value here, yes? This value. Oops. Right? So I can just plug this value where? Here. Okay. So I can put here. So this is, by the way, square root of 3 divided by 2. But if I plug this thing here, it will be square root of 3 divided by 4, v0. And this is half. OK, so we clearly have uh, two equations and two unknowns, because we have 1 half vb post plus VA post N is equal to square root of 3 divided by 2 V0. And from second equation, we have that minus VB post plus 1 half VA post N is equal to square root of 3 divided by 4 V0. Yep, so these are our unknowns. So if you solve it, guys, if you solve it at home, you will obtain that. That our VB post is equal to something and VA post N is also equal to something. And these some things are 0 0.693 v0 and this guy will be 0 0.520 v0 okay so we solve the problem yes let me visual let me visualize it for you guys so let me just draw these two particles post impact and you can ask any questions you want So this guy, you, you told me that this guy will be 0 
693v0. This guy will be 0.5v0. And this guy will be 0.520v0. So actually, this vector will be the length of this vector will be 0 0.721 v0 yeah so this is the direction this is the direction of our upper particle after the impact that's all any questions tom let me think let me think oh in here I forgot about the integral you can put integral here uh, when we draw the momentum di diagram for the upper ball so Let's put plus here from zero to TF DT. Excuse us, that. I don't know. My guess is no. My guess is no. Uh, because we still don't know what is the time of the impact. Yeah. But that's actually the beauty of that problem that you actually don't have to know how much time it takes and what is the tension in the in the rope in the rope to solve that problem. Yeah. I don't know, guys. I kind of like that problem. I don't know what, what you think, but this is like one of the most physical problems, yes? Where you just look at the system and you see that, for example, aha, something happens along this direction, but nothing happens along this direction. Let's maybe go for this direction, yes? It would be easier for us to solve that problem, yes? And then you look at the problem from a different angle and you see that, oh, that direction is like kind of easy to put the equation along, yeah? So, I don't know. Show on it and maybe you can ask me on Friday. Have a nice afternoon. Bye.